When you look at the public education system in America today, do you see a system that is failing or one that's working? Uh, well, it really kind of depends on your zip code, whether it's failing or not. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, we consign a large number of our students who live in the wrong zip codes to failing schools. And a lot of those kids, they come from homes with no books, they go to a school with no library or poorly functioning library. Then they move up into this high school where things are not happening and they drop out. And you see these enormous dropout rates in some of our major cities. This is a real scourge on our society because we have to recognize that for every one of those kids that goes down that wrong pathway, you know, that's one little person you got to protect yourself and your family from, pay for in the penal system or the welfare system. One less tax-paying, productive member of society who may discover the cure for cancer or a new energy source. So we really can't afford to be wasting these people. What is the federal government's role in tackling this pro problem? Because there's a real, you know, a push and pull there between, you know, local control, which everyone says is so important, but also the role that the federal government can play. Well, the federal government can play an important role. You know, right now, for instance, we're behind in STEM education, substantially, particularly from other developed countries. Um, and it's a national problem. There are ways that, you know, we can have a national focus on getting our people caught up. There's no question about that. So are you using the bully pulpit to sort of make that message heard? Absolutely. Because you're still relying on states to ultimately get this done. I would use it and I would also look at the states that are doing well. You know, it was intended that we would have all these laboratories in each one of the states and we could learn from them and we could, you know, see who is extremely successful and then we can make that available in other places. Tell me what you think there's a debate going on in Congress, has been for a while, about the reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, or what's more commonly referred to as No Child Left Behind. Um, what, what do you think about it, generally? Generally, I don't want any child left behind, of course. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know of anybody who does, but I'm not sure that, again, that we have to nationalize this thing. I think if we do it at a local level and we give people school choice, that will take care of itself. So let me ask you about Common Core. I think the idea behind Common Core was to create uh, a common set of standards to help each state raise their standards. I am generally uh, hoping that it will die a quiet death. And I think the less federal interference, the better. Uh, states will be able to set their own standards. Uh, work with their uh, local school districts and with parents and PTAs. I don't see a downside in doing it that way. I see a big downside in imposing from above, you must do it this way, this is the standard that we have set. Uh, so far, it's created nothing but chaos.